partial and semi-partial. Let's say our outcome that we want to examine is example four. There are factors or variables that can influence the outcome. Exam anxiety and revision time are two variables that we can use. If you look at exam anxiety and its relationship with exam performance, we can find the variance or the explanation that is accounted for by exam answer. In this example, it is 19 point. We can then take revision time as a separate variable and then look at example and examine the variance accounted for by revision time. In this example, it is 15 point. We can bring both variables and look at the outcome, exam performance, and there could be an instance where the revision time and exam anxiety, their variance or the explanation and that overlapping of that variance or the explanation is what we call the common. It is the variance that is accounted for by both predictor variance. But there is also a unique variance or unique explanation that is of offered by revision time. And there is also a unique explanation that is offered by exam anxiety. They are the unique variance. So when we look at the correlation among two ways, we can look at the full correlation, partial correlation, or part correlation. The full correlation is the shared variance among the two variables. It could be the common. So in the diagram, that I have shown there, it is the blue area and the red area. The outcome variable here is the yellow that is shown in the yellow or the top. When it comes to partial correlation, if you are examining x as our predictor variable and y as our outcome variable, then w becomes a third variable that, we, that blue area is the unique variance offered by the x variable. The red area is the common variance offered by x and also the third variable w because they own. So except by partial correlation, using a third variable allow us to the unique variance offered by a predictor variable and a common variance offered by part correlation where that is applied in regression analysis is where we look at the predictor influence on the outcome. It is the unique variance that is offered by the predictor variable. So in this instance, x as a predictor variable, the unique variance is shown in because we know the common variances are caused by the third variable. So if you look at from another perspective, in partial when we want to examine the effect of revision time on exam performance, we measure the effect of revision time on exam performance 
But at the same time, we also look at the influence exercised by the third variable, which is the anxiety on revision variable, which is the predictor variable, and also the outcome variable, which is the exam performance, so that we can identify the unique variance contribution by the revision predictor on the exam performance and the common variance that is offered by the revision predictor on exam performance. But when it comes to semi-partial correlation, we ignore the common variance that is offered by the anxiety variable, which is the third variable on exam performance. And when we want to look at the revision variable as a predictor, we look at that individually and its influence on exam and but it becomes semi-partial correlation becomes useful when explaining a relationship from a given variable on the outcome, whereas the partial correlation becomes useful in explaining the unique relationship and the common relationship and the variances that is offered by a given predictor as unique variance and common variance. The correlation coefficient speaks about the strength of the relationship between two variables. It is denoted with small r. If there are only two variables, we can square it and get the coefficient of determination of the variability that explains the shared variance between the two variables. The correlation coefficient talks about the strength of the relationship, coefficient of determination, talks about the variability or the amount of explanation outcome from one predictor to the outcome variable.